Greetings, I'm Chris Sims from Agile Learning Labs. And today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about cognitive biases and use some examples uh, in the context of a scrum team in particular, how cognitive bias might impact uh, the product owner. So let's dive in and see what this is all about. According to the Agile Dictionary, cognitive bias is a systematic pattern of irrationality. Cognitive biases can lead to perceptual distortion, inaccurate thinking, illogical interpretation, and ultimately poor decisions. Because cognitive biases affect how people understand and even perceive reality, they are very difficult to avoid, even for a person who's aware of cognitive biases and which ones uh, they tend to be impacted by. Just knowing that isn't enough to overcome them, but it's an important first step. And virtually everybody is impacted by cognitive bias. Yep, I got them, you got them. So let's dive in, let's look at some common ones and see how they might impact our product owner. We're gonna look at these five, confirmation bias, escalation of commitment, present bias, surrogation, and the planning fallacy. Confirmation bias. This is a tendency to search for, interpret, and favor data that supports your pre-existing position and to not pay as much attention to data that is contrary to your existing position. And uh, we also have a tendency to uh, interpret ambiguous data as supporting our position as opposed to you know, not supporting our position. So Scrum product owners uh, tend to have deeply held beliefs about their market, their stakeholders, their product, the features, how the features should work, all of that. And confirmation bias is very likely to lead a product owner to disregard or undervalue information, data, and evidence uh, that says, hey, your current understanding of your market stakeholders and product aren't entirely accurate and you may need to inspect and adapt your plans for the product. Confirmation bias leads us to think, oh, no, no, right? That evidence isn't so valid or important and to overvalue the evidence that says, yeah, my current understanding of what my product should be, it's good. Escalation of commitment is our next cognitive bias. And this is a behavior pattern in which people facing increasingly negative consequences from a, a decision they made or a course of action that they are taking uh, will actually continue to follow the original plan, right? Even when it's clear that doing so, you know, isn't going well. And this is very much related to the sunk cost fallacy. So the sunk cost fallacy is the belief that because we've invested so much already in this endeavor, that we need to continue to invest in it so that we can get return on our investment. Even if our current understanding and current data, current indicators say that the investment that we need to make from this point forward is greater than the benefit or reward that we're going to get from completing whatever it is we're working on, right? So essentially, we would be better off abandoning this thing and going and doing something else, but the sunk cost fallacy will lead us to continue uh, with our original course of action, even when it doesn't make sense to do so. The present bias. So this is our tendency to overvalue near-term gain or pain, and undervalue longer-term gain or pain. And the way this shows up is a product owner is much more likely to have the team implement some feature that can be finished very quickly and so we can get the benefit right away, as opposed to having them work on something that might take significantly longer but have dramatically greater uh, reward and thus have a much higher ROI. One of the classic examples is not choosing to automate all of the regression tests, right? Oh, that would that would take a while to do, but wow, once all our tests are automated, we don't we don't need manual regression testing anymore, 
and our releases are going to be of higher quality. Uh, it's going to take less time and less cost to release the product, so we can turn around changes and new features much more quickly. Um, the ROI on, on automating tests is huge, and yet few product owners opt to make that investment instead of adding more and more features that can be done quickly. Surrogation. Surrogation is a phenomena, psychological phenomena, where the measurement of something comes to replace the original thing in our mind and our thinking. So uh, an example here would be a product owner tasked with increasing customer satisfaction for the product over time may come to believe that the customer satisfaction survey score is customer satisfaction. And they may choose to take actions that will drive up the score, perhaps by changing the survey itself, which of course doesn't actually impact actual customer satisfaction with the product. Relatedly, I see lots of folks who believe that velocity has intrinsic value. And so they end up doing all sorts of things, investing time and energy and effort, uh, fussing with story points and velocity, trying to drive that velocity number up. When what we really need to focus on is building things that will create actual value for our stakeholders. The last of the cognitive biases that we're gonna look at is the planning fallacy. And the planning fallacy says that we will underestimate how much time and effort it will take to get things done, even when we have done similar things in the past and saw that consistently they took longer than we thought they would, right? In the face of all this evidence that things take longer than we think they should, we continue to think that in the future things will take less time. This is summed up really nicely in Hofstetter's Law. Hofstetter's law states that everything will take longer than you think it will, even if you factor in Hofstetter's law. So based on this, product owners frequently will repeatedly make those overly optimistic forecasts and, uh, you know, it doesn't serve us, right? Our stakeholders lose confidence in us and it makes the team look bad, right? People are like, oh, that team always takes too long. No, we're probably just suffering from planning fallacy and ignored the evidence that things take longer than we thought they would. So these are our five common biases that we looked at, and I hope this was valuable for you. Uh, if it was, and you'd like more, maybe you'd like to have further conversations about cognitive biases and product owners or whatnot, head on over to agilelearninglabs.com. And there are lots of ways to connect with us. You can connect with us on our LinkedIn group, send us messages, or come hang out with Season and I at our twice a month open office hour. So you can find information about all of that uh, at agilelearninglabs.com. Hope this was valuable for you. Thanks a lot.